Welcome to the second episode in a series where we'll be taking a hands-on look at how electric motors work. It's nice to see a few people already following along, and a lot of you are subscribers, so thanks as always for watching. So with the way YouTube works, a viewer interactions with the videos pretty much decides if other people get a chance to see these videos or not. So if you think other people might like to see these videos too, then don't forget to like, comment, share or subscribe. So in the last video I indicated that in this episode we were going to be experimenting with magnets, but as things have it, I've decided to push that back to the next episode. Instead, in this episode, we'll take a look at how I made the electromagnetic coils that you will see in the following episodes. Now originally I wanted a couple of electromagnets manually, but quickly found this tedious and difficult to keep the windings tight, and I also kept losing count due to my ADHD. So I decided to create an overly complicated mechanism that could automatically wind the coils for me. I picked out a few bits and pieces I had on hand, including the ubiquitous Arduino Uno, cheap servo, and stepper motor. The design is pretty straightforward. The stepper motor mount and winding reels stand as one unit. The wire guiding servo and adjustable back tension bar are integrated as another unit. And finally we have the wire reel holder, with an easy to remove shaft held in place by gravity. Everything screws onto a single 3D printed base plate, which locates everything in its correct position. So on to the 3D printing. With everything running nice and smoothly as always, you can see here I'm using a brim to minimise lifting. But that's easy enough to remove. And as always, no supports. I really hate them. Otherwise, pretty much everything came straight off the plate with no need for further processing. So enough talk for now. Instead, let's enjoy a quick assembly time lapse. Yep, looking pretty good so far, if I do say so myself. I'm really loving those screw inserts. Satisfying to install and satisfying to use. Next up, printing and preparing these little bobbins. The bobbins are what I will wind the wire onto and remains as a part of the final finished coil. Each bobbin is printed as two separate pieces and I think the fit and finish is pretty good actually. Once positioned, I simply use some super glue to stick the two pieces together. For the core, I'm just using some 10 mm threaded rug that has been machined to size. To secure the wire end during the winding and to keep them out of the way, I drilled some holes and filed some slots into the outside of the bobbins. So here is the setup. The stepper motor connects to the stepper motor driver, which in turn connects to the Arduino Uno. The servo also connects to the Arduino Uno, routed via the breadboard for convenience. And finally four buttons also connect to the Arduino Uno, and that's pretty much it. No dedicated display on this build, instead I'm just using the Arduino IDE serial monitor to see what's going on. In using that, I'm actually fudging a navigatable menu display, and I'm just clearing the screen by sending a bunch of empty lines, and then redrawing the display as I need to. It's not that bad, but the flicker can get a bit annoying at times, I guess. Actually, a chunk of the underlying menu and settings code is pretty much copy and paste from the original mini Lace project, so that saved me a bit of time. Now, I did add a heap of smarts and configurability to help automate the winding process. I don't think it would be all that interesting to explain in detail, so we're just gonna leave it at that. If you do have any questions about it, just leave them in the comments. 
So the first test I did showed some promise with the mechanism working pretty much as I had imagined. But I noticed that the wire guiding servo was sometimes getting a lot of angular forces from the feed wire, pulling it out of position a little bit. Also, the small rotating parts were wobbling a little bit, which also affects the wire's position. So after a little bit of thinking and a redesign, I came out with this. The updated design now adds a second servo. The first servo pretty much handles most of the feed wire's initial angular load. So I think the second servo should now be able to maintain a pretty accurate position for the wind. I also widened the base plate a bit so I can support some wider wire rolls that I have purchased. And finally, I modified the stepper motor mount so there's more adjustability and therefore can wind wider coils. So here we go with another quick assembly time lapse. <laughs> done and looking pretty good. Next up I'll attempt to print some of the more precision parts using resin printing instead of FDM. I was thinking about something positive to say about resin printing but honestly my experience so far has not been great with more mess, cost and disappointment than I would like to think about. Ultimately the resultant parts are brittle and easy to break and generally don't provide the degree of dimensional accuracy or surface quality that justifies the effort to make them in the first place. And that being the case I nearly always just stick to FDM printing when I'm making things. But I think this is going to be one of those rare cases where resin printing just might be better. Anyway, let's give it a try. So here is the main winding shaft. There's a little bit of shrinkage and lifting on the bottom here you can see. Overall, compared to FDM, less layer irregularities and naturally no layer seam. But I wouldn't go so far as to say this is a nice finish either. The finish of the top, however, is pretty good and the little locating pins came out nicely too. This is the shaft side part of the bobbin holder. Again, we can see some shrinkage on the bottom here. The detail on the top side is pretty nice and the tiny bobbin locating pin here would have been impossible to print in FDM. The outside piece of the bobbin holder is also very nice and clearly better than the FDM version. Here you can also see another tiny locating pin for the bobbin and check out this pretty noticeable seam layer in the FDM version. Here is the first piece of the bobbin, you can see the locating hole here and here you can see the tiny step I added to help locate the other piece of the bobbin. And again, at this scale, something like this would be impossible for FDM. For the other piece of the bobbin, I was even able to print the wire sluts into the surface. I actually had the holes for the wire in the original design too, but the elephant's foot likely made them disappear when it printed. Okay, let's do the rough fit check. The bobbin is installed in the bobbin's holder and the locating holes are aligned with the locating pins. And here is where the main shaft locks in place with the two pins. Now to file out the slot for the retaining nut. Now even though the span of the bridge seems pretty tiny, as this is resin printing, any horizontal bridging will sag. Actually, the thin layers get sucked down as it prints. Now, I would have preferred to use thread inserts, but they just don't work with resin prints. Trust me, I've tried. Anyway, this solution works good enough. Now for the step motor shaft fit check. I need to back the screw out a little bit to make a space. Otherwise, no problem. A pretty snug fit, no adjustment required. Very nice. Now, this piece is interesting. I actually printed my own servo horn. Even though the servo shaft has these really tiny splines, I was still able to get a perfect fit. Check that out. <laughs> 
It's really nice. Unfortunately, the tiny wire hole did not make it through the printing process, so I need to manually drill that out. To assemble the bobbins, first I need to file off this elephant's foot from the inner diameters. Then I mount them on the bobbin holder, positioning the locating holes correctly uh, before I go ahead and superglue them together. Then file off the elephant's foot from the outer diameter, and I'm using the bobbin holder as a guide here. And that's it, we're all done. Now as you can see, the winding action looks much better than it was before, and overall I'm pretty happy with the upgrades. And a little side note, while the stepping motor is powerful, it's pretty damn slow, with a max speed of about 15 RPM, it's glacial. Anyway, it's what I had on hand, so it just had to do. And now for the final time lapse, doing a full wind. Definitely worth a watch, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. So this is the final result. Not what you're expecting? Well, me either. Here is one with less windings. It's a little bit better. Actually, I ended up spending days tweaking, calculating, winding, observing, readjusting, reobserving. It's just an endless process. In some cases, I could actually get a pretty good wind, but it's not perfect. So check this out. Looks good, right? But then I wind the exact same thing again, and it looks like this. In the end, I gave up feeling a bit defeated, actually it became apparent that there was simply too many factors at play here. And once you get beyond about three layers, it begins to become very hard to control the position of the wire with any consistency. Anyway, I found this wiki page which actually states something similar, so likely this behaviour is hard to avoid. Anyway, I spent way too much time on this one, so I'm leaving it for now, and maybe I'll revisit it in the future. Who knows? At least I have the ability to automatically wind a specific number of winds with a decent level of neatness, and that's all I need right now, so it's going to have to do. So that's it for this episode. If you've got this far, then thanks so much for watching. In the next episode, I promise we will finally get to do the discussion experiments looking at magnets. So I do hope to see you then. See ya!